welcome back to the GSL Code. I'm Taze. Is with me is Kelly. Kelly, I'm sad. Moonglades, Taze Moonglades died. I'm sad. He's dead. Not really dead, but you know what I mean. Sad at Code. Uh, the first game was disappointing. The second game a little bit better, but it just wasn't enough. So uh, unfortunately, we got to move on to uh, the second half of today's games. Um, we're gonna have Junwi against Alicia, a Zerg versus Protoss. It should be pretty interesting. We've had all Zergs today, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. It's Zerg. Uh, yeah, been Zergs all day thus far. So uh, ZVP Junwi against Alicia. Junwi, of course, from Team I Am Incredible Miracles. Uh, also a very old school StarCraft one Zerg. Oddly enough, though, he is one of these guys. Do I have your? Isn't he the president of president of the Players Club? He is. Yeah. He's the president. President. The and president. He also was a very successful StarCraft 1 pro gamer, but oddly enough, not as successful in StarCraft 2. Mm. Just not doing as well. Um, and that's that. I can't explain that because normally it's the opposite. Uh, if they're good at that, then uh, they're going to be good at, um, you know, at, at StarCraft 2, you think, especially if they play the same race. But he's had a harder time. The players, though, say he's pretty good and say that he hasn't shown his full potential here. So, um,. It's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty good game. Uh, who do you think is gonna win between these two? Mm, Slayers is really Slayers. Alicia is pretty good. I don't. I think this is his first GSL though. For Junwei, he definitely would be in the lead because he has so many number one GSL winners. Yeah. In his team to practice with MVP Nasty. So many good Zergs. It's it's. I'm I, I'm waiting for the moment when when Joey's just gonna dominate. He's gonna own uh, now Alicia, a member of Slayers. Uh, Slayers, very 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 good team. Uh, of course, all my Slayers boxers. They're actually the ballerist team. They have the most money because the Slayers boxers are such a baller. He's like, I'm gonna make a team, and you're gonna be on the team, and you're gonna be on the team. And he just says, it's he's rich. So uh, they got a lot of support here, richest team in uh, South Korea. And uh, you know, with that being said, they get a lot of benefits, a lot of perks. I believe one of the primary sponsors is Razor, I believe. So it should be a pretty interesting game. Our game is uh, not only the count, not only is the countdown finished, but in the game loaded. Uh, we're in the game now. So when our great commentators are ready, we're going to cue that screen for you guys. Should be any second now. Wait for it. In the red, our Zerg player, StarCraft 1 Pro Gamer. I am Tony. There's a shot of him now. Kind of an older brother to many of the StarCraft uh, 2 Pro Gamers out here. And we're going to go to our, our Protoss player. In just a minute here. Generally, by the way, such a good StarCraft 1 player. One of the favorites for training partners in StarCraft 1. Guy would grind out a ton of games. Now to our Protoss. Flayers Alicia. Alicia. Who is Alicia? I know that's not his English name. Alicia. We're on Zelnaga. Zelnaga. As a Zerg player, I kind of hate playing late game on this map because of the Colossus and the Force Wheel that can create such a good choke. A lot of entry points in this map are pretty small. So once you get Force Wheel, probably around 4 to 5 of them, you can cut my army into half pretty easily. Slayers recently have been picked up by Razor. Yeah. Big company. Slayers, they're micro. It's Razor Shirt. <laughs> now, Forge is on the way. I don't actually like to do the build that the Protoss is doing on this map. I actually do the three warp gate expand because I feel like the entry point is so big that uh, if you actually get Roach Rush and they do it right, you can do a ton of damage. Um, if not, lose your base. We'll see, though. Jun 
Lui going for an expansion pretty soon. Ah, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought. But as Tasers was saying, you do see that Jun Lui expands with Forge, which is very risky, like Tasers said. Because if they come in with a Roach army, it's going to be very hard for you to defend against. A couple of hits from a Roach takes on one cannon, so you have to remember that you need more than one cannon to defend your expansion. Interesting second cannon placement. It would seem to me if you just got Roaches, you could be able to, to just snip at the uh, Nexus. If not, bum rush one of the cannons and back up and get the Nexus. The question, of course, though, remains... Is uh, Zerg actually going to go and get roaches, or is Zerg going to just uh, not bother being aggressive? I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can play a situation like this out. You could try to uh, get even more ahead by expanding again yourself. You could try to rush them. You could try to tech very quickly. Maybe mutalisks when they're main won't be covered. This probe wants to scout what's inside the Zerg space. Currently, the Zerg only has Chaos Speed Links. Normally... Builds against Protoss as a Zerg player would be Roach Hydra, which is very common. But these few days we've been seeing a lot of interesting ones like Bane Links coming from Zergs. You do see Jun Lui getting his Cybernetics call up, so pretty soon he'll be getting Warp Gates. And some Speed Links coming in from behind. Sees a cannon, now needs to back off. When I do this build, yeah, I get the Stargate just like he's going to get. Get a Void Ray, then get a Phoenix, scout with a Phoenix, kill Overlords with a Void Ray. Don't want the Zerg, use the Zelnaga Watchtower, so I want him to be in the dark. Then you get a Robo Bay. Now we've seen some players get a bunch of Gateways and push. We've seen other players get a bunch, uh, or get a second uh, Stargate. That's what I like to do. That's what we saw in the team leagues. Uh, it was pretty sexy. On this map, I would be guessing that you'd only get one Stargate, one Robo. Start to push, get Stalkers with Blink. There you go. Zerg is going banings for oh, the Oh, interesting. I think he's actually going to do a baneling bust. Doesn't look like we're going to see a long game here. Has a lot of speedling line up and ready. Near the go expansion of the of Junui. He's going to go down behind John's common knowledge <laughs> hallway and make some banes. Alicia doesn't see it though. Gets five gate. Now you know that yeah, this is going to be a five gate rush. No Robo here, skipping that. Interesting. Here he comes. All right, here we go. Pivotal moment here. Oh, nice force field there. He does tear that down and takes the cannon out. But a void race here. And he needs to get just one more force field up. And by the time the Bane Link is still there. Okay, this attack. I don't think it's going to work. He just doesn't want to lose his probes to the Bane Link. Man, man, what a weird rush. All he has to do is get a, uh, this cannon up and keep uh, holding on here. Nice block there. Totally denied. The Void Ray and the Citric can come over here and do the damage he needs to do. The Citric goes down. Assault pops out. Uh, Sing Cannon will finish soon. Force Field wears off. Well, I don't think he did as much damage as he hoped he would. He used a lot of units to take down the drone line of um, Junui. And Alicia is currently only going to there. So he might have trouble defending with this Void Ray. I hope he has more than two queens in his base at the moment. Void Ray is going to come into the Zerg's base very soon. Spots a massive amount of speed links there in the middle of the map. Not enough. Actually, he didn't, didn't really have enough cannons at that point of time. But there was nothing much he could do. Defend against that Baining push. He didn't have much gateway unit. I, I really just feel like he should have gone. He's going to try to rush him, do road rush. Don't do the Baining um, bust rush here. Unless you're very certain you can do a lot of damage, then yeah, maybe you could have went for Baining. And now we have the Void Ray in here attacking the Queen. But there are two Queens out and a third on the way. He does back off. Meanwhile, Protoss. Cranking out of his warp gates soon. Well, Junui does have Nessie to be his teacher. So you yeah. can see he's playing Sao. It's so funny because Nessie, somewhat of a failed StarCraft 1 Pro Gamer. Uh -huh. uh, Junui, somewhat more of a prestigious one. In this case, it's kind of like the table to turn. Nessie is like 
the god of Zergen Junwing uh, is you know his performance tends to be a bit lackluster. This white race to you on the map. Two warriors are actually on the map right now, and Junwi has responds with Hydras. So these warriors are going to prove to be not that useful for him. Hydras pop out. He needs to get out of there pretty quickly with that void rate. Shoot oh, the Phoenix, my not the void rate. Oh. Denied. Very nice. Dicks on the void rate. Now Alicia knows not to push with so much air unit and not to invest so much in target units since he sees that Junui has Hydras trying to take down the back rocks with his Zealot and a couple of sentries. Has three hatcheries running on two bases so he's not going to have a problem reinforcing his new units. Going to snipe this overlord that's on the map. Hydras taking down the back rocks as well. The Overlord goes down, and this is what you want to do when you do a Stargate build after uh, expanding, guys. It's not just about trying to attack the Zerg at its base, you just want to clear out the map. Look, Zergs are used to having Overlords creep, all that jazz, everywhere. Um, if, you, if they can't get their creep tumors up, and your Void Rays can prevent that easily, if they can't get expansions up or Overlords out there, which Phoenixes and Void Rays can prevent easily, uh, it's tough. And as you can see, Zerg's sort of in the dark, scrambling to try to find uh, out what's going on the map. Here comes the five gate push. And, you know, he doesn't even need to go for any place other than the expansions. There's no need. Zerg doesn't really have enough units on the field at the moment. He is pumping up eight Hydras at 16 minutes. Might lose his second Natra right now. Cancels it. Cancels it, retreats with the drone. Protoss does not know about the other natural, though. Or not, not the other natural, the other expansion, though. Robotics facility on the way. We've seen so many different situations where Protoss will fast expand two base and then transition into different army compositions until eventually he has that Colossus ground army ball with some Phoenix Void Ray support. Zerg going for the gold right now. Phoenix is continuing to check around the map. Do see Hydras and Speedlings patrolling the map, trying to cut the map into half for himself. Junri doing very well expanding. Protoss should actually have pushed earlier than he should ha uh, than now, because he did have five gate and one star gate. That was enough to push into the base of the Zerg player. Not sure why he decided not to go though. Looks like Junri is gonna try to apply some pressure here. Already has four base up. Has a spire at your hallway. In Eden. my hallway. Eden. Uh. I, I, I don't know what Zerg's plan is. Uh, Junmi seems to be expanding pretty aggressively, but he's got a Hydra's off creep right now. I mean, oh, hold that thought, we got a battle. And you see, I, I don't know, why Why are those units out there? Like, what? Your Hydra's, you're off creep. I know, what are they doing? They're sticky when they're off creep, they can't get anywhere. Mutas in the main base of Alicia right now. Junmi going in with his Mutalist. Here comes Phoenixes to try to snipe. Gonna lose those two Phoenixes there to the Muta ball. Do see Muta manage to get all the probes off the main base. Here comes a Hydra trying to deny the third base of the Protoss player. Can he actually come in? There are so many sentries there. He needs to get his Mutas to the third base if he wants to go. 